Good morning, good morning, good morning. I was gonna do a different AM hustle, but I saw some shit that pissed me off. And I'm gonna address it because it's starting to happen more and more. I've been on YouTube since 2009, and it started last year and it's, it's starting to reach a crescendo. You have all of this stuff that's going on with white supremacy. But before I get into that, before I lose my mind, because it's coming, it's clearly coming, I've got something to say to you little weak little bitches, because I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you littering my YouTube channel or the YouTube channel that YouTube lets me have to be factual with all of this weak, bitchy, whiny ass commentary that you want to impose your inferiority on me. I don't believe I'm a minority. I don't act like a fucking minority. I don't walk like a minority. I don't talk like a minority. And as long as you continue to act and talk and feel that you're a minority, you'll be treated as such. There's something you should know, you so-called educated folks. Brown people are the majority in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. I know, right? But before we get into that, because I'm about to go off. Yeah, we're going back to the early days. Let me show you what started this shit. And this, this, <sighs> just sick of this. I'm sick, sick, sick and tired of it. And I, let me just get into it. Uh, you, you, let's, it's just going to be, let's just start from the top. All right. Now, was it this one? Is this one, this one? Nope, nope, nope. I have so many videos. All right, let's go back to the one that did, where it is, where the action is happening, <laughs> where, where the fuckery is going off. Ah, it's this one. Here we are. Get rid of that. And I'm going to address some stuff here. Going down. Here it is, Leah Smith. You keep saying in a roundabout way that blacks are responsible for their own conditioning to their mentality. I 100% fucking believe that. But if I recall properly, during the early 1900s, American blacks were quite entrepreneur and had several thriving communities, businesses across the U.S. In fact, many of our nightclubs, sports teams, and theaters were considered the best in America. What happened? Racists destroyed them all, literally burned them to the ground, Greenboro being the most infamous examples. Asians don't have to deal with the KKK coming in and burning down what they built. Now, let me address this. Number one, Asians in America were put in fucking camps. They were in prison. So, uh, yeah, they kind of had to deal with some shit. Also, back during the 1900s, each time you motherfuckers come to the channel and you start this stuff, you have to go back decades. You have to go back decades. Rosewood, Greenboro, these thriving communities. Why the fuck aren't they happening now? Right now, there are no gates to any shit that you want to do if you start your own business. Uh, are there still barriers in institutions? Of course there are. Is there barriers in college? Yes, there are. Is racism out there? Yes, it is. But I say, fuck white supremacy. It's not going to hold me back. It's not going to stop me. But you weak-minded bitches seem to think, well, I can't do shit because of white supremacy. Oh, my God. White supremacy. Yes. Oh, I hate that weak-minded shit. All right, so let's go down here. And let's see. In fact, they have extensive help from the government, which assisted them in setting up business in urban areas. Bullshit. This is what Asians do. As someone who's dated an Asian woman who has been up in the fam, they work to fucking gather. Do you know that Korean mothers buy their children's homes? How do I know this? I was sitting there doing the conversation. They work together. I lived in Japan. I've been to... <laughs> It's no, it's like, well, they get this special help. All immigrants get an up pass because when they come to the United States, they realize what a wonderful fucking place this is. So bullshit on that. And urban areas, black hair care. Nope. Let's let's just talk about this. The reason that Asians took over black hair care is black folks are cheap as fuck. 
And if black folks supported black folks and paid decent prices, the Asians never would have got a toehold. I'm sorry. It's the truth. If black folks wanted to take it over, it's like, look, I'm going to pay my brother and my sister more money to get this thing so we can get this thing going. But uh-uh, it's cheap. I got to get my Yaki number five, Marimi number two. I'm going to go see Odyssey and get that because uh, Shanika, she too expensive. You know, she braiding hair and shit. Uh, previously, that business sector was all black and all thriving. Uh, let's see. I'm not saying <laughs> American blacks can't do better because we can but we should, but it should be un. It's unfair to make the comparisons between us and Asians given our history. Okay, let's see. By the way, you speak as blacks. When I lived in Ethiopia, I had a thriving and growing. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, yeah, this other part. Actually, Nigerians are the most educated group in the United States. Not Asians. Besides that, love your video. Many their uh, your videos and many are very informative. Okay, let's talk about that. I said, what group has the highest level of business ownership asians <laughs> then i said what group makes the most money asians and what is the most educated group asians there was three components to that statement but you pulled out the thing with the nigerians which i addressed in the same video on the same comment thread i addressed that nigerians have the highest sat scores but population wise there are more Asians in the United States than there are Nigerians. And here you go, Ken John. Why, why are you even on this channel? I agree. Unfortunately, some of our people have this white supremacist attitude also. Whenever I hear someone talk about personal responsibility, you know what? If you got a problem with personal responsibility, something that I have been talking about since 2009, get the fuck off this channel because I'm going to talk about it again. I'm going to bring it up again. You're going to hear it all day long because it's personal responsibility that will move you from the fucked up mindset that you have to a better place in life. This, ooh, and will and yet will not acknowledge the racial oppression component. Okay, I'm going to read something to you. It makes me sad. No, your weak mindset makes me sad. I'm sick of this whiny, bitchy, well, it's white supremacy. I can't be successful because of the white man. The white man is just going to keep me that bullshit. See, if you came out of your myopic little woe is me world and realized that most of the United States is poor, and that includes a lot of fucking white people. <laughs> and no, no, I mean, seriously, you're going to hate me in the future because I'm going to talk about more about this shit because, see, this is what I am beginning to understand. That many people who think like me, who are black, or what? They're afraid to speak up because anytime that you want to hold some people accountable for their actions, you're being sexist, you're being racist, you're being homophobic, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why you're on this channel. And I'm going to say something that's really, really arrogant and elitist. Maybe if you changed your fucking mindset, maybe I would be watching you versus you watching me. There's a reason that you're watching me and I'm not watching you because I fucking say fuck white supremacy. I say fuck all of this notion of you can't be successful. I do not take the we black and we fuck paradigm. I don't take that shit. I don't believe in it. And I'm about to prove something to you because if both of you would come out of the well, we got to stick in the community because this is my thing. When I built this business, I built this channel. I built it for everybody. I did not go like, well, this is just for black people. You know why? Because I can do math. There are 45 million black people in the United States. There are roughly 55 million Hispanics. And there's like 230 million white people. So if you have a business and you're trying to sell as much as you can, why would you go with the smallest group? Yeah, I'm pausing for a reason. Why would you do that? That makes no sense. Now, what about doing this? Now, this is something that's really, really interesting. Say you create a business to the point that you have enough generosity that you can help out some people because you have the ability and the resources versus you're trying to beg your way to wealth, trying to legislate how people feel, trying to change people on this heart level when you're not. I have a video where a racist 
And I know when I tell these stories, again, okay, black folks such as yourselves, well, that didn't happen. You got lucky because see, your mindset is I am fucked because I'm black. That is your mindset, and I refuse to accept it. I refuse to let it into my house. And each time that you want to put these little whiny, little bitchy, yes, you know, you were being nice, but see, in a roundabout what? First of all, this is a truth that many people don't want to accept. If as much energy went into building businesses, building institutions, as it was preserving the use of the word nigger or nigger and all this other bullshit, in a generation, black folks would be in the same position as Asians. The energy that I see, and these are the opinions, these are my opinions, there's so much time and energy goes into bullshit. Things that provide no money, that don't change anything. Wine, wine, wine. I got a group of people, whenever I post something on my personal Facebook page, that they want to come in and they just want to whine and they want to bitch. And I started doing this. So I said, okay, it's true. Racism is real. Police brutality, police brutality is real. What can we do to change it? Cricket, fucking cricket, fucking cricket. Because see, like you two, Leah and Ken John 1204, it's very easy to bitch and whine and go on, but solutions, whoa, what about solutions? What about solutions? Because see, Bitching and whining will not change a fucking thing. But solutions, coming up with solutions. Number one, if you are suffering, quote, white supremacy, start your own fucking business. How the fuck can you be a black revolutionary with a job? How, how does that work? I don't understand because you are diametrically opposed to the power structure that you are working for. How does that work? How can you be a black revolutionary with a job? I don't understand that. First thing, if you're a black revolutionary, you've got your own business. You would never have a job. You would work. You would work for yourself and make 25k versus working for quote the white man and make 50k because your principles are more important than that cheddar, right? 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 No, they're not. It's bullshit. Because one of the things that I look at is when people are trying to do better. Actions speak louder than words. What you do is more important than what you say. And I'm going to just start drilling these fucked up comments by black folks, by white people who put this weak, whiny bullshit in my comment section. I don't even know. This channel is for heroes and sheroes and people who want to do remarkable and wonderful things in their lives. It's not for people who want to be like, well, I'm black and I'm fucked. Well, I'm a woman and I'm fucked. And well, I'm gay and I'm fucked. I'm a little kid and I'm fucked. I got kids who watch this channel who are making money. With that, I got a shout out. I got this. This I just read this and this is what when you don't when you say fuck white supremacy and you put yourself out there, you make things happen. This is what happens. Hold on a second. Uh, I am like, I hate a whiny bitch. I just hate it. It does. It solves no problems. It solves nothing. All right. This is from Chris. And I'm going to read it because it makes me feel good. Really, really, really good. Hello, Glendon. I'm Chris, and I'm from Northern Ireland. Sorry about the length of the message. Northern Ireland, there's a good chance he's white, maybe even a red-headed ginger. Ooh. I have been watching your videos for about six months now, and I recently turned 18. So I was very excited to buy the Hustlers Kung Fu Founder Edition. I got it about a week or so or two ago, and I can honestly say thank you for everything. I have had social anxiety for over four years, and each year it got worse and worse until the point where I was only, I would where I would only stay in the house and fake the personality to my friends, so I didn't have to go out, and then couldn't stick around the school from the anxiety. So stopped going for the past two years, which got my mom and dad a big fine because of you. I finally have told my mom after keeping it inside for so long. I'm going to start getting help from thir uh, from Thursday, and I've started a gym. I started in the gym a couple of weeks ago because of you as well, which just made me feel a lot better. I just wanted to tell you this because I'm truly thankful of you. Now the business sides. Now the business side of things, which I love. I started with 
300 pounds, which is, I think, $450 from the Christmas money I got. I did three months preparation before I got the money to learn how eBay worked and a lot of other things at the time. I've seen, I haven't seen your content, so I hadn't seen your content, so I didn't know how bad eBay was, but eventually I found you. I've already started my eBay business, so I went along with it and I've been applying all of your information to my mindset and to my business. You truly have a way with words and you explain everything. I don't know how to do it. Seven months on, uh, on after starting, my net profit weekly is 400 pounds plus. That's like $650. He's in Ireland and he's 18. A lot of you in America don't make $650 a week. I sell shyster pens. I'm looking to get into a lot of different types of marketing ideas, but my head is in one place at the moment and I'm struggling to concentrate on the courses because of what's going on. Do you think I should strictly work on my social anxiety first before I concentrate on different business ideals regard Chris? All right. Well, I'm going to send him a written reply. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Don't change a thing. Work on your anxiety, work on your business, keep going to the gym, do all of that. You bought the founder special. The courses are going to be there. I would say start with 30 days to 2,500, just the original one to stick with that and keep doing what you're doing, dude. And congratulations and really, really thank you for the email. I appreciate it because it is nice how this dovetails into what I'm talking about because I, I don't get this. Well, actually, I'm lying. I do get this. You have people who would rather whine than shine because shining is hard. Because the thing is, we all start off as fucked up little diamonds. We've got lumps and shit, cracks into polishing hurts because polishing is friction and friction is heat and heat is truth. So you got to deal with that. So it's just easy to remain a dirty little fucked up diamond than to actually shine your shit up. And that's what a lot of you are doing. And once again, to all my viewers, if you put this whiny bullshit in the comments, I'm going to start doing these videos more often. I want you to go in the, in, the, in the bathroom, bitch slap yourself today into reality. You can be successful. It doesn't matter if you're black. It doesn't matter if you're white. It doesn't matter if you're a woman. Shit, you could, they're, Caruso the dog. Man, let me show you. You could be a dog and be successful on the internet. I'm, I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> I am not. Caruso the dog. Hopefully. Hold on. I got to find it. Oh, nope. This is funny. Here we go. I'm going to just let this play for a second. Now, the reason he has this long commercial that you can't skip, they put those on the channels with really strong videos. Uh, this video has 1.6 million views and it, it'll be two years old. Oh, it's two. It was two years old. No, it's not even two years old. It's a, it's a year old. He's a dog. He's a Dotson. He's making money. Yes, even a dog can make money. All right. I'm trying to turn it off now. Here we go. Yes, even a dog can make money on the internet. I, I'm I'm serious. It's just this whole do not put that slick handed. Well, we're gonna talk about him and hopefully we can bring him down to our fucked up weak mindset of well, I ain't shit because of white supremacy. Repeat after me, you two who posted those comments. I can be successful. White supremacy is not going to stop me. It's not going to stop me. Fuck white supremacy. Also, have you ever noticed, I don't even use the term white supremacy. I don't even bring that shit up. There are some of you motherfuckers that got that head on, that shit on autoplay in your head. It's like white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy. You play that shit. I mean, the KKK is sitting at home like, damn, we got them sprung. They, 
they got you on fucking remote control because this is the thing. And as someone who has exposure to people around the world, clients in Israel, clients in Ireland, I have a bunch of folks who know that I'm black, know how I have my face. I'm not the most polished person in the room. I use a great deal of profanity, has have been since 2009 on this channel, and will continue to do so. And they're still coming. The channel's still growing. This is the thing that I'm trying to impart to you two weak bitches. And if you unsubscribe, cool, because I'm tired of seeing, I don't want to see any more weak ass comments like that. Well, well, you know, and stop going all the way back to the 1900s. There's plenty of fucked up shit that's happened recently. You don't have to go. You want to know why that there are no more thriving black communities like it was? Is it white supremacy? Mm -mm. It's single motherhood. And this is what happens. And I'm going to go deep. First of all, kids need both of their parents because biologically, we're wired a different way. And typically, this is how it goes. Mothers usually do the rearing, the, the talking, the nurturing. And then when that kid turns 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25, 30, 40, that's when the father takes over. And you have all of these kids who get that mother part. And then around 13, when they need that masculine energy and it's not there, then they start to get fucking lost. I got a lot of kids who watch this channel. And that's why, because, you know, the new thing is I'm the brother you never had. You got kids who are living with their mom, confused as fuck, and can't say shit because as a kid, you're in a vulnerable fucking position. That's your mother. You can't say shit. You got to depend on her. So you're stuck. Now, that is one of the biggest reasons that the black community is not where it used to be. Did you know that black marriages and um, actually having children out of wedlock was not a common thing in the black community? There were more white women who had kids out of wedlock or, quote, got in trouble and had to move out of town. Black folks weren't doing that. Yeah, so it's, that's that's the reason. That's the big reason. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate with this. And it's like, whoa, well, you're talking about single mothers. Yeah, I am. It's a fucked up thing. I don't think it's a good program. I don't think it's a good parenting model. No, I don't. I think kids need both parents. Now, I actually had two parents. My grandmother acting, quote, as the father figure because my mother, she just... <sighs> She was spoiled. I'll just leave it at that. But my grandmother taught me to read before I went to school. And that's very, very important because as I do my training, I read books and I study things. One of my greatest gifts, which I got from my grandmother, was I have the ability to learn. I know how to learn. I know that sounds really, really, really simple. But once you learn how to learn, it is a lifelong skill set that will weigh heavily on your success. That's the reason that I can do the things I'm doing and I dropped out of college. That's the reason that a lot of other folks can do things because they already got certain things that people, a lot of folks didn't get. I, I had that whole, you know, it, it was a different kind of dynamic, but I didn't go to daycare. When I left, I went to preschool. And when I left, someone walked me to the school's, uh, the bus. And when I came home, somebody was home. That was my life until my grandmother passed when I was 11. That was my life. And when you have that kind of structure, which is real, real, it's more important than money. It's way more important than money because you have people when they're developing and they, they turn 12, 14, and they don't get this skill set, it is a problem. It's going to be much harder for them to learn later on in life. And you've got these people who are saying, mm, it's not that important. No, dads aren't that important. And, you know, the single mother, the she wrote thing wrong. You do your thing, girl. The kids are suffering. You cannot tell me the kids are not suffering. You can't tell me. Anyone that comes in like, well, they're fine. I talk to kids. As a YouTuber, I talk to a lot of kids. And they, they no, they're, they're, they hate this shit. They hate this shit. Uh, my daughter, she told me, you know, she was about 12. She was just like, I hate this divorce thing. I said, I understand you got screwed. 
I'm sorry for that. You got screwed. That's just the reality. Anyone that's like, oh, it's okay. They'll be no, 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 no. You're lying to yourself to make yourself feel better because it was a fucked up paradigm. I will say something else. And my daughter, she confirmed. She was like, well, if it weren't for your mother, I'd probably still be married. And she said, I know. She said, that shocks me because she is not a good woman for you. Kids know the truth. They're just in a vulnerable position and they can't tell the truth because then they get, they suffer. And that's one of the reasons that I'm speaking more to the kids. Make your money, build your business, get the fuck out of that house. And I, I will say this. If, if you're a kid and you got parents who are buying you everything, you need to stand up and put a time, a clock in your head when you're getting the fuck out the house. I mean, you be productive, do something, because the longer you stay there, the deeper the dysfunction of path, the pathology of dysfunction will go on. It will just keep deeper and deeper and deeper. That's what will happen. And you will get this crazy notion because I have grown men and women fighting with me over common sense things. I have people like, well, give you an example. I was talking about something with this person of color and they were just like, mm, white people don't do that. And I'm just sitting there like, I'm amazed at how many black folks who have no white friends and the same thing with white people who have no black friends who know exactly what's going on with that group based upon just casual observation. Now, I will say that I have the benefit of working in an emergency room and dealing with the public on a level that most people don't. And I've seen a lot of shit like, you know, going back to single mothers. I have seen mothers flip out and abuse babies. I've seen the, the x-rays. Babies don't get spinal uh, spiral fractures. That's like when they take their arm and just whip them around like that. Or when they get this uh, elbow ting, that's when mothers are fucking losing their mind and taking it off on those kids. But shh, we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about that. It's more common than you think. When you adjust it and watch Stephen Molyneux, and he talks about this, when you adjust, when you add kids into the mix, women are the most violent gender. Yes, most abusive women, but we don't want to talk about that because that would require a different conversation. That would require a different level of thought. That would, This is why I've got in my course, like disruptive dating, because a lot of guys didn't have the father, didn't have the older brother, and they're going out there on that dating uh, paradigm that will get them fucked that will have them losing half of their wealth because they're trying to be a called so-called good dude to someone that isn't worth their goodness because of social narratives. Uh, this is my thing. Respect begets respect. You, if you're dealing with someone who's just fucking you over, don't respect, fuck them and move the fuck on. I don't, in this whole good woman thing, this good man thing, be authentic, be who you are, be who you are. And when that person shows up, it's like, mm. Ooh, this is good. I like this Kool Aid because you know, going back to the profanity and the uh, my propensity for using the word fuck. If you come to this channel, it's like mm, I can't get past that language. Essentially, what you have done is self qualified. You you've just opted out. You've just said, "Hey, I'm not his viewer." That's that's it's not good. It's not bad. It's just the way it is. But many of you want to bring me down to your level of thinking, which will don't use profanity you will have more viewers. Really? Howard Stern uses way more following. I think he has porn stars fucking on, on this show. Uh, biggest radio deal ever. Be who you're going to be. Do Does the profanity turn some people off? Yeah, I know this. I'm fully aware of it. And do I care? No, I don't give a fuck. Because this is my thing. I like being me. It's fun being me. I wake up. I get to do what I want to do. I work with the people I want to work. I live the life that I want to live. I am fucking free. Do you understand that? I don't make as much money as all some of these other people. Fine. Cool. But I tell you what, I am in my boxers right now. And when I get finished doing this rant, I am going to go do my exercises. Then I'm going to go get on a treadmill then I'm going to have a nice breakfast and I'm come back and then do my 10 a.m. training session here on YouTube. Then I'm going to play around the rest of the day. And then later on, I'm going to go to the gym and do my second session because I got to get back. I got to get my ass back in gear. That's what I'm doing today. That's what I'm doing today. 
is fun for me. It might be morbidly boring to someone else, but I'm doing what I want to do. Now, let's get back to why you should say, fuck white supremacy. Don't use that word anymore. You got that shit up in your head. It's just like when you're playing football and you start tagging the quarterback, you get to the point where after one, two, or three good hits, get scared. You in his head because when it's like, hear those footsteps, oh, that pass goes the wrong way or releases early. You can tell. I used to play linebacker. You can see it in their fucking eyes when they get scared. And see, that's the thing. You don't have to sack them. You just have to tag them a few times. And when they see you coming, and it, I'm, this is just a defensive person to me, but there is nothing better than when you're getting ready to sack that quarterback and his eyes are like this. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> oh, it's so fun because they know they're going down and they're scared as shit. And I'm quite sure some people have saw themselves on the field. I'm quite sure it's happened. But essentially, you cannot be walking around as a white supremacy puppet because that's what you are when you keep talking about it. Because I'm going to give you some facts. As many of you know, uh, I don't care what color my dating selection is. Don't give a fuck. So I've dated Asian, white women, black women, Latinas, Puerto Ricans, uh, Dominicans, actually a few Africans. I was dating a girl from Cameroon. Don't fucking care. If I like you, you like me, we can have a big happy, happy, happy ending. And I have seen some things because I choose to participate in things. I had a Jewish roommate when I was in the military. We used to talk about a lot of deep issues. Many of you quote white supremacist folks, don't fucking go out and talk to anybody. You don't know what's going on the other side. And the minute that they say something, oh, see, you're white. You can't talk about that. That bullshit. Because you're fucking weak. You're fucking weak. If you're going to let the presumption of because you're black, that somebody's going to say something and do something that you can't be successful, then you're fucking weak because a lot of the horrors of racism, the segregation of the 60s, many of you motherfuckers weren't even born. And also, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge the shit out of you since you want to leave these little weak, bitchy-ass comments. What the fuck are you doing to change your shit versus coming on YouTube and whining? I want to see comments of bravery. I want to see comments of valor. I don't want to see this bitchy shit. Oh, white supremacy. How dare you? How dare you say? How dare you want to hold black people to personal responsibility? Fuck you, Glenda. Fuck you, Glenda. Personal. I don't want to be responsible for shit. I just want my 40 acres in the mule, motherfucker. I don't want to do shit. They gave reparations to these people, these people, and these people. It's not coming. It's not coming. Let that pipe dream go. Should it have happened? Yeah, it should have happened. They should have got their reparations. They should have got their 40 acres in the mule. It did not happen. Guess what? Quarterback, you threw that interception. You got sacked. You fumbled. Next fucking play. It's the next fucking play. Stop with the, I can't do this because of what they did to my grandfather. Bullshit. My grandfather owned a barbershop. I'm not with the whole whiny shit. Yes, there was horrible. Yes, it happened. But if you're not doing everything in your fucking power to be better, then you have let white supremacy kick your ass because you're a weak fucking little bitch. And once again, I'm going to do more of these videos. I'm going to leave those comments after your own pearl. Go right ahead because I'm going to slice them up. Because if you're going to challenge me, it, like this whole thing about Nigerians, there was three components to that statement, but you casually left out the most important ones. Asians have the highest level of business ownership in the United States. Asians, highest level, and they're one of the smallest groups. Highest level. Business ownership changes every fucking thing. Not whining, not bitching, not marching. And go ahead and put the like, well, you know, we changed all these policies. No, no, no. The motherfuckers with the money changed the policies. If some motherfucker in your organization has money, then yeah, you can get the policy changed. Because I guarantee you, if we had 20% of black folks in the United States owning businesses, how black folks are treated 
around the world would change. 20%, not everybody, just 20%. We have, as I think uh, someone put in the comments, one out of 110 or one out of 150. That's not going to get it done. And then here's let's let me just address the other thing that's going to come. Everybody don't want to start a business. Well, this is where it gets really fun. You, you claim to be this black revolutionary, but you come in the door with excuses. Well, if you're going to be a quote black revolutionary, then whether you want to start a business or not, it's not even part of the fucking equation. It's a part of honor and duty. You should do it. But see, what I'm doing here, I'm improving the image of black folks and I'm being my fucking self and I'm saying all of this shit because when you get more of me and there are more coming because there's a lot of black people who think like I do. I get the emails. I have the people on Facebook who are sick of the whiny shit. And the, the division between black folks who are making money and the folks who are in, it's like, well, see, you bought into the system that bought you. You cannot have what you hate. You've got white supremacy all up in your fucking head that you don't even say shit that makes sense. Well, I, I ain't trying to be rich. I'm not trying to get money. I just want to live. Okay, black revolutionary duty. You have no fucking choice, soldier. If you're going to fight a war, fight a fucking war. Don't put on a uniform, then go around the building and cry like a little bitch. You're going to get in the game, get in the game. Next fucking play. That happened. It was horrible. It was atrocious. But we're on the next fucking play. Are you going to be a quarterback or your ass going to be on the bench? Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You don't even have a, you didn't even dress out. You didn't even have a uniform on. You just out there running shit through your head and littering your weakness all over the YouTube verse. Yeah, I am going to be harder because I'm sick of this. I'm sick, 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 fucking tired of this shit. Because, see, Part of the problem is you live in this little shell of a world and you don't expose yourself to other shit. Because if you expose yourself to other shit, you would not say the things that you say. You wouldn't. You just wouldn't. So is it the next play or are you going to keep running the same old sad, we black, we fucked. I just wants to be left alone. Yeah, because see, talk is cheap. And that's all you're doing in the comments is talking. I want to see some fucking action. You want you believe in these principles? I want to see a YouTube channel. I want to see a blog. I want to see you putting forth some effort into the world. Because see, action changes shit. Action is the greatest truth there is. Whining, bitching, hate it. I will talk about you. I will mock you because that shit's not going to change anything. And one of the reasons I'm being sorry, I used to be just like you. And then when I change my mentality, I change my life. And I'm talking to the kids because some of you older folks, you're fucked. You just going to go to your grave, believing in these false narratives, thinking that they're trying to get me. They're trying to make money. You ain't worth shit. Who wants your ass? David Simon said something in an interview that was really, really pivotal. And I watched it years ago. We have people in our society that we don't need. And I don't mean that from the Christian, everyone else. Be, What's your purpose in society? What are you contributing to society? Let's just say you're a black revolutionary, right? Do you have a garden in the, in, the, in the city? Do you have a store in the city? Can you give people in your community jobs? That shit changes shit. As long as you're in the wine box, every time something happens, it pokes the wine button. What fucking good are you? You know, someone was having a debate with me on Facebook and it was just like, oh, can you get people jobs? I'm like, yeah, I own the business. I can get people jobs. Well, do you have any power? Yeah, I have power. See, and I'm going to reference this book for both of you. And this is a challenge. I want you to get this book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. And I want you to read it and I want you to post a video and let me know when you do it. Now, see, I know neither one of you are going to do that because, see, that takes action. That will require you to do something. Now, whining doesn't require you to do anything. But, yeah, do that challenge. Go ahead, get the book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, if you actually watch this video before losing your fucking mind. Post a video, 
post a link to the video here and let me come to your channel and observe you. Oh, oh no, 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 Glenn, I ain't trying to do that. I just want to come here and bitch and whine. I just want to come here and bitch and whine and just keep talking about this shit because, see, you know, you should be like us. You should be whining. You should be marching. Give us our reparation. I've came to a conclusion on this shit a long time ago. It's not going to happen. Then I asked myself, what are you going to do? How are you going to get your reparations? I'm going to start a business. What are you going to do for your kids? I'm going to leave them a legacy. When I die, my kids are going to have some shit. That's what I'm doing. What the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? Long as you keep your life will not change. Long as you keep whining, bitching. And see, this is the thing. I, I figured out because I got a friend. He's a doctor. And I called him up and I was like, dude, man, I need to talk to you. Are you getting hated on by, you know, people? He's all day long. Now, he grew up country to the town, really smart dude, worked his ass off, went to medical school, doing this thing. And he just said, he's like, I get hate on both sides. I get hate from white people. I get hate from black people. Because he's successful, because he dedicated himself to doing what he needed to do in this life. He worked hard. And I was like, dude, this just this shit's just happening. He just said, Well, the greater the noise, the greater the success. And I was like, damn, okay, I'm about to be rich up in this bitch because the volume level is going up daily. And I understand that a lot of the viewpoints I have fuck with your sacred cows. Like, you no, know, I, I am like going after education. I'm going after this whole false notion of yeah, false notion. White supremacy. White people are catching hell. White people are catching hell. There's a reason that white people are out there in Ferguson. And it's not because, well, we're, you know, we're just going to show support. A lot of white people are getting their ass kicked by the police. White people are being shot and tased by the police. Sometimes they deserve that shit. Yeah, I said that. Because this is how I look at it. When I see this stuff on Facebook, I go ahead and I look and I read and I try to get to a police report to find out what the fuck happened. I just don't go, oh, it just happened. Because let me tell you somehow, Facebook is fucking you. Facebook, the F in Facebook is for fuckery. They intentionally put shit up, trunicated videos. If you don't know what trunicated means, it means parts are missing. <laughs> it's been cut down. And all of a sudden, you see people losing their minds. They're also reposting and recirculating older videos. The more inflammatory the video, the greater the posting frequency. Because I'm like, I saw this because people are like, this is a damn shame. And then I'm like sending people clips. You know that happened in 2008. They're recirculating fuckery. That's one of the reasons that you have to be real careful about what you share on Facebook because it is designed to induce you and get you all agitated to the point that you are putting out some bullshit, that you are sharing some bullshit, that you are part of the fuckery parade. And this is for everybody. This is totally for everybody. So if you know you are black and you're watching my channel and you don't have that weak, bitchy attitude of, whoa, we fucked because we're black, thank you. And thank you for chiming in, in the comments because I know there's some of you, I already know who's coming in the comments on this one because you cannot even hope to be successful with that fucked up mindset. You can't. You are truly the slaves and coons of the 2015. Yes, you. You're the slaves. You're the Uncle Toms. And actually, Uncle Tom was a noble guy if you read the story and if you read history and understand that shit was changed. But many of you are the coons because you are full of fuckery. You are full of bullshit. You're full of whining. You're just full of wine. I mean, you're the coons because... This is what's going to happen. As you have these conversations predicated on race, the real war of class is happening right before you, and you're not even participating because you're stuck on a war that's already over. You can't go back and change that shit that happened. You can't. Like I said, are you the quarterback? Are you uh, are you ready for the next play? Or are you going to keep reliving that fumble? Are you going to keep reliving those horrors that did not happen when you were alive? Didn't happen. 
just didn't happen when you were alive. You know that you don't really know the pain. You can commiserate and you can have empathy, but you weren't there. You weren't there. It wasn't you. You don't even know anybody that was there, but you act as if you were. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they're doing in us. No, that's what they did to them. Right now, you can do more than you fucking know, but because white supremacy has your brain in a cage, you can't even fucking think. White supremacy. Why? 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 Why supremacy? Why? I can't do nothing because white supremacy. Why? 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 Why supremacy? Stop using that word. Go out and be successful. Do your thing. Do not let these proposed things of bullshit fuck up your paradigm in your life. And for the kids out there, do not start listening to that shit. Do not believe the bullshit that your parents are putting in your head because they're older and they are who they are. That doesn't have to be your life. It just doesn't. I see. I got some watchers because it's like, oh, it's 624. Let me see what's what's going on in here. Let's see what the hell's going on. I don't even know how long. I don't even know how long this has gone on. Oh, here we go. I mean, seriously, this is what I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna start roasting these weak, weak bitch ass comments because I'm sick of them. It is not the way to end your day or start your day. I mean, seriously. Oh, let's see. Uh, Brett, eat a big fat one. I don't want a private chat with you. I'm not your girlfriend. Matter of fact, let me show you something here. There you go. You can move on. You have a great day, Brett. Um, <laughs> I mean, seriously. This is what I'm talking about. People want to be heard. All right, so I'm going to jump off into, I don't even know how long this is. So what I'm going to do is go off to the folks who want to learn about. Hold on. Let me get in there because there's some other stuff that I'm getting ready to do. Just give me a second. I really don't expect anyone to be out listening because, you know, sometimes I do this at like five o'clock in the morning and there's there's, a, there's only so many people. I see that. uh <laughs> Some people, uh, Metals Enterprises is an early riser. Joseph here. Ryan's here. I'm, I'm telling you, this, this, this is going to piss off a whole bunch of people. I don't really care because I'm sick of that stuff because it gets to be crazy 